much, Jim Hutchins, for the Jerusalem Connection Spot Report for this week. Well, we just completed some of the great holidays of our faith. Good Friday, Passover, Resurrection Sunday, all glorious traditions uh, with, uh, for Christians and for Jews. And we're now in the week that's following Passover. It's called the, the, <clears throat> the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days afterwards. We're in the midst of that. And uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is very symbolic. Leaven, of course, throughout the scriptures is a metaphor for sin. And of course, as Christians, we believe the sin issue has been dealt with in Jesus, in his death, his burial, his resurrection. And acknowledging him and believing in him, there is a righteousness that he gives, not our own, but he bestows upon us his righteousness. And uh, the leaven is removed. Now, unleavened bread speaks of leaven that has been removed, bread that has been removed. It speaks of a people. It's symbolic of a people that is without sin. How does that happen? Well, we believe that uh, as Christians that that happens when one acknowledges the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus our Savior. Now, those who say, there are those who say that... Uh, Israel has never acknowledged Jesus, so they, because of that, they have no right to be back in the land. They're not in a covenant relationship with God, so they have no, uh, they shouldn't even be in the land. It's not their land. <clears throat> but one of the most remarkable statements that's given to us in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, is from Ezekiel 36, and gives some clarity to this issue. Ezekiel 36, verses 16 through 24, the prophet says this, Again the word of Yahweh came to me, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their conduct and their actions. Conduct and actions. Their conduct was like a woman's monthly uncleanness in my sight. So I poured out my wrath on them, and because they had shed blood in the land, and because they had defiled it with their idols, I dispersed them. I kicked them out. It's a land promised to them, but their behavior will, will determine whether they can occupy it. It says, I dispersed them among the nations. They were scattered through the countries. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. And wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name. Now, he uses the term profane five times in eight verses. It's important to God. Wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name, for it was said of them, quote, these are the Yahweh's people, and uh, they had to leave his land. I had concern for my holy name, which the people of Israel profaned, second time, among the nations where they had gone. Therefore say to the children of Israel, this is what Yahweh says, it's not for your sake, O people of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name. which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. It's three times. I will show you the holiness of my great name, which you have profaned among the nations. Four times. The name you have profaned. Five times. Among them. The nations will know that I am Yahweh when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations and I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. Now, do they have to be an unleavened people? Do they have to acknowledge Jesus? Do they have to be in a covenant relationship with God before God brings them back? That's not what he says here. As a matter of fact, he says he's bringing them back in spite of the fact that they have desecrated by their conduct and their behavior. They have blasphemed the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel, by their conduct and behavior. They have profaned the name of Yahweh by their conduct and their behavior. In spite of that, he's going to bring them back. He is bringing them back. He has brought them back. Now that should serve as a great source of encouragement and hope to all people. If God will do that for Israel, will he not do that for you and for me? Unleavened bread symbolizes bread without leaven, symbolically without sin, a people without sin. 
But we believe the sin issue is dealt with as far as Jesus is concerned. And as far as we're concerned as we acknowledge that. And what he has said of Israel and the people, the Jewish people, should be a great stimulus, a great encouragement to us. Because Jesus, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Till next week, Od Ki Yavoshilo. Till Messiah comes, Shalom Alechem.